Welcome back everybody. On today's episode, we install a new Denon AVR in the Danjin. Stick around. Hey guys, in the video today, I'm going to review two different receivers. Receiver number one is what I currently am using in my home theater and that's the Denon AVR X4100W. It's about six years old, and I've been thinking about having it upgraded. So the model that I'm going to compare to the X4100 is the brand new AVR from Denon, the X4700H. In this video, I'll show you how I install the new AVR some of the overview of it, some highlights, differences, things that I like, and things that I can live without. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. So right here we're looking at both of the different Denon AVR receivers side by side. The 4700H, the new model, is on the left and the 4100W the model that I currently use is on the right. The Denon X4100W has been an excellent receiver. Denon has done a great job of keeping the menus consistent over the years. The main differences between the 4100W and the 4700H happen to be things that they've pretty much got rid of over the years as well, such as front wide channel support, DTS Neo, changes in the USB playback, some of the high resolution audio formats have changed, Odyssey DSX, auto speaker cal calibration has changed, some of the analog line inputs uh, have been removed, as well as the compo uh, composite video inputs. Analog pre-outs on the 4100W are actually 13.2, which you can only use 9.2 of those at once. And that's with added amplifiers. One of the main reasons I planned to upgrade from the 4100W to the 4700W was because some of the video features have been upgraded on the 4700W. I'm a pretty big gamer, so I like to see that the 4700W has the future technology to uh, not only run HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, Dynamic HDR, but it also can do up to 8K upscaling to 60p and 4K 120Hz. Granted, you have the correct cables and output device, such as a uh, TV that supports HDR, uh, HDMI 2.1. The 4100W really only supported 4K pass-through up to 60 um, and it even struggled sometimes to do that, depending on the cables that were used and the units that it was pushing the signal to. Plus, it didn't have HDR, which I think is a huge game changer. Oh yeah, and don't forget Atmos. So the 4100W could handle Atmos uh, really with no problem. In fact, it sounded good, but it left me wanting more. I was only able to run a 7.1.2 setup, and I actually wanted to do a 7.1. Uh, 1.4. So this new 4700 gives me the option to do that. Plus, it gives me the ability to run DTSX content. The Denon 4100W has been an absolutely great receiver to have used over these past six years. And for anybody who's not looking for an extreme setup uh, with all the latest technology, this should be able to last for several more years. I highly recommend the 4100W and look forward to seeing all the adaptations as the receiver in the 4000 series continues to change over the years. When we turn each of the receivers around, you'll see that the back is very similar as well. The unit on the left, the 4700H, has moved a few of the speaker wire plugs on the bottom. All in all, it looks like Denon moved a few of the speaker wire inputs and changed the labeling on several of the HDMI inputs and outputs. 
Switching back to the front panel, you'll see the Denon 4100 has plastic buttons with an HDMI port on the front as well as buttons to select your zones as well as your inputs and some RCA for auxiliary and mic setup on the front. The 4700H is not much different other than a nice metal finish, similar inputs, and different buttons along with a chrome surround around the navigation tabs. Comparing the unit's weight, I would say they weigh roughly the exact same, and the dimensions are similar as well. This should make replacement pretty much seamless. Now let's go ahead and remove the 4100W and replace it with the 4700H in my entertainment area. You'd like to begin the replacement by making sure that all of your components are powered down and have sat for at least 10 seconds before removing any of the power cables. This includes the subwoofers, game consoles, power amplifiers, and even speakers. I was able to make it a little bit easier on myself because when I originally installed the 4100W, I placed banana plugs on all speaker cables going into the unit. This makes adjusting speakers or testing different components much, much easier to remove and add inputs. Once everything is unplugged, just keep in mind that all of my cords are labeled so I know where they go when the new receiver gets installed. I would suggest you do the same. Here I am bringing in the 4700H. Make sure you fold down the Wi-Fi antennas so it can be easily placed in the console area. Repeat the same process you did by plugging in all of your inputs while the power is off. Once everything's plugged back into the AVR, go ahead and turn back on your power, and now we can go through the setup menus. Denon makes their setup menus rather easy to navigate. Denon will show you exactly how to install speaker wires, where they go on the back of the receiver, and ask you exactly which speakers you have for your setup. They make it very easy to choose if you have Atmos speakers, height speakers, wide speakers on the 4700H. And then also don't forget to select how many subwoofers you have in your room. In our case, we have two. You can go through and play test tones, make sure that volume comes out of each of the speakers. I suggest doing this to make sure that the polarity is correct and that your speakers are all producing sound. Some of the final steps you'll want to go through in setting up your brand new receiver is to make sure that you check your speaker distances and your crossovers. Obviously, Odyssey will run a lot of this, which I'll show you in a few seconds. But if you feel like manually changing any of those things, changing the distances, changing the crossovers, changing what size speakers you have, that's the menu to do it. And last but not least, like I mentioned before, plan on running Odyssey. Odyssey is the room correction setup that I think is superior to Denon and Marantz receivers. Odyssey will calibrate your room to exactly what your speakers need, setting up the appropriate distances, loudness, and many other factors so that your home theater is set up exactly the way that it should be in order to get the most value out of your entertainment.
I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a lot of information to cover. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel, The Dangen, so you can see all the new content that's going to be coming out. Feel free to ask any questions you want in the comments below, and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see me review. Thanks.